Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our 94th A hour. If you need assistance, please use the chat window. If you're having difficulties in configuring your connection, please log out from the session and rejoin again. You may also use your phones or tablets to join by using the webinar ID 170-732-875. Please be reminded that all microphones are muted throughout the meeting. For comments, please use the chat box. And for the questions, please use the questions box. The Q&A will be done after the lecture. Tonight, speaker is Pierre Dane, Director of Technology at Gempi Health Systems. He has background in large-scale data engineering and is currently completing a Master's of Public Health at the University of Cape Town. He is working on the African Health Information Exchange Project with the University of Cape Town Center for Infectious Disease and Epidemiological Research, the South African National Health Laboratory Services, the South African National Department of Health, and the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. We may now call on our speaker, Sir Pierre. Um, hello, thanks very much, Cha, and hi, everyone. I'm very pleased to be um, able to present at this forum. Um, I, um, I just want to quickly um, give everyone a, a kind of a context to the South African um, health information system landscape and some of the details about South Africa and then I'll go into a few more details about the African Health Information Exchange. Um, I, I, I think everyone will, I hope everyone knows about GMB Health Systems. We're an African not-for-profit organization focusing on health data exchange um, and uh, Hello? We, uh, sorry, you're there. Hello? Hello. Um, are you sharing your slides right now? Uh, um, I haven't got any slides to show right at this minute, but I think, uh, all right. I think, I think the slides, I thought the slides would be, um, uh, would be showing. Oh, okay, here we go. All right, thank you. So, Okay, great, thank you. Um, so yeah, I was just uh, just talking about GMB Health Systems. Um, our, the link is just www.gmb.org and you can see what, what we do. Um, we're very um, involved with the Open HIE community and with Open MRS and um, we champion interoperability in Africa um, and internationally. So just for an overview, I'll just go through the South African context as I mentioned, tell you bit about the population statistics, about the government's frameworks, um, and then some of the national health information systems um, that are present in South Africa. Um, I'll go into a little bit more detail about the Western Cape province, because um, the South African health system is federated, for want of a better word. Um, the, pro the provinces are responsible for delivering health services, um, and there's nine provinces in South Africa. And then I'll go into more detail about the actual um, program that's uh, that we're working on, which is the African Health Information Exchange. So, um, South Africa um, has a population of 56 million people, um, 1 million annual births, um, probably a little bit more than that, quite a high HIV prevalence of 12%. 80% um, of the population rely on public health services, and they access 4,000 public health facilities and around 400 public hospitals. Um, most of the facilities uh, have a paper-based system, health information system, so there aren't very many ubiquitous national electronic health systems. Um, and part of the reason for that is because there's some serious connectivity challenges here, as, as, as there are in, in, in many countries that we work in. Um, we do have quite a strong governance framework in South Africa. So um, in, in 2014, the National Department of Health and the, and the government um, uh, gazetted the Health Normative Standards Framework, which is, a, which is actually a, a law that um, dictates that all health information systems in the country should follow this framework. Um, and the guidelines are that the, the national health information system should be a patient-centric health information exchange, there should be unique patient identification and shared health records. Um, there is a matu maturity model um, going from paper to full electronic um, and we're still right at the beginning of that, um, of that maturity um, 
process, but uh, but there has been a lot of um, very interesting developments in the last two to three years, which I'll go into in more detail later. Um, the framework also dictates that international health standards, health messaging standards should be used. Um, that's IHG, ISO, HL7, et cetera, and all of the coding standards that go with those. Um, and, and the policies to adopt where possible, adapt those standards, um, and develop new standards um, if necessary. Um, we, we also, it also focuses on an enterprise architecture required to extend the health and normative standards framework for particular implementations. Um, I, I haven't mentioned here, but there's also another law called POPI, which is the Protection of Personal Information um, Law, which is, is quite, a, it's quite, quite a stringent HIPAA-like um, piece of legislation that um, makes sure that uh, personal information is protected and that's very relevant of course to us in the health sector and we have to be very aware of, um, of that law when, we, when we're releasing health systems. So there are a number of national health information systems, not all of them are ubiquitous across the entire country in all of the facilities um, and I'll, I'll go through them. Um, the first one is the health population registration system. So this is the national master patient index um, it's being rolled out and should be available in all um, primary healthcare facilities within a, a few years. Um, it's, uh, it, it does have PICS PDQ interfaces, um, but it also um, acts, it has an online offline uh, capability where, where there's um, in, in implementation at facility level and then there's a central um, master patient index and those two um, communicate when there is connectivity and sync data between between themselves, um, and that's not that's propri proprietary, very highly optimized um, communication channels. Um, but there's PICS PDQ interface at the facility level and to the um, national instance. Um, it's installed in about uh, 3,200 facilities. Will be by the by March, um, and that's out of the 4,000, so it's almost all of them. Um, and with that rollout is, is, a, is an LTS router rollout, which, uh, um, which hopefully will allow online um, access um, and, and, that, and, and enable that sync mechanism to, to operate efficiently. Um, it's, it's installed at facility level in a, inside of a, a VM um, and connects to that central server that I mentioned. Um, so this, this system is installed at every registration desk in every facility and theoretically every single patient accessing the public health system will, will be registered um, and, and it's, it's linked to the, folders, to the paper folder filing systems. So it should make retrieval of those paper folders um, more easy. And just so everyone knows, South Africa still runs mostly on paper uh, and um, with you know, we're trying to move towards an electronic model as fast as possible. Um, the other system that is ubiquitous in South Africa is the DHIS, which I'm sure everyone knows about. Um, it, South Africa was the first country to implement DHIS 2 1.4 nationally. That was after the change of government in 1994. And uh, that, that's been a very successful Lighthouse implementation of DHIS 1.4. The DHIS has been upgraded to DHIS2 web, um, and that's, that, that's still ongoing, but is almost complete. And the, the focus for DHIS is, is aggregate data, um, routine collection on, of aggregate data, and there's no, um, there isn't a lot of tracker um, implementation at the moment, although there is an IDSR system, integrated disease um, surveillance and response system that is, is tracker based. Um, and South Africa has quite a strong framework of national and provincial indicators. Um, there's a master facility list and uh, a data dictionary which is available um, publicly. Um, MomConnect is another um, platform that's national um, and this is a maternal health program. Um, mothers can register uh, into this uh, into this suite of stage based messages which um, will will provide mothers informational SMS messages from um, when they register pre
pre-birth, so that would be you know up to nine, so eight to nine months before they give birth, through through the whole the whole pregnancy, and then for a year after the baby is born, um, and then there's also access to a help desk, which is manned by um, uh, manned by um, a group of nurses who who give advice to to mothers. So it's it's a real time system that can be um, accessed by mothers. Uh, we launched in August 2014, and since then we've registered over 1.7 million mothers, uh, and that's about 50% coverage. Um, and also bearing in mind this is only in public health facilities at the moment, 20% um, of births um, happen in, in private hospitals. Um, this, this infrastructure that runs um, the MomConnect platform is, is based on the, on the open HIE architecture. It uses the open him information, uh, local information mediator, health information mediator, apologies. Um, that's the interoperability layer. It uses DHIS2 as the data store, so that is that is another tracker, in, tracker um, application that's, that's used nationally. Um, and uh, it's, you know, it, it's formally audited and, uh, and follows the HMSF. Um, so that's... Um, that's sending out millions of messages every every month and every day, uh, week weekly. Actually, there's millions of messages, um, and um, it's been very well received by mothers and is um, a very successful ML project. Um, we also have a national health laboratory system. So there's an organisation called the National Health Laboratory Systems, which um, captures all of the public health. Um, does all does all of the health the, the lab tests in the public health system um, handles 80% of the pathology tests, 265 sites, it's one information system, um, and then there's a, a, a clinical data warehouse as well, which, store, which is used for analysis, and they process 300 million um, data records per month. We also have a, an HIV management system called Tier.net. Uh, that is a, an offline system that is used primarily for HIV management. Recently, there's been a, a TV module added, um, and there are a few more models, uh, modules planned, one, one of which is uh, maternal and child health. This is a, a standalone, very low resource system. It can run on a, you know, on a Windows XP machine. Um, it's, it's a back office system. so. Information is captured into paper folders, um, and at the end of the day, the, um, the, cl the clerks need to capture that data into the electronic system. Um, so there's a, the, the system does provide operational reports at facility level. Um, so this is managing um, uh, loss to follow-up reports, uh, unsuppressed viral load reports, um, etc. And then the data cascades up to district and provincial level using um, this concept of dispatch files, which are either emailed or sent on USB flash drives from facility to district level. Um, and then uh, district and provincial reports can get run from that data as well. Okay, so I'll just go into a little bit more detail about the Western Cape. Um, health information systems. The Western Cape is a province, um, the southernmost province in South Africa, um, and it's also got the most advanced health information system. Um, it's a population of 6.5 million, and there's, um, there's, there's an advanced electronic um, infrastructure. Most of the facilities are connected um, through a, a WAN and, and a virtual private network. Um, there is a central master patient index where every person in the, in the province is, is registered. It's a nine-digit numeric patient identifier, and the last four digits of that identifier actually indicate where the, fold, the paper folder is stored um, in the filing system. So it's, it's very efficient. It's been running for a decade, and uh, it's based on barcodes and stickers. Um, so th that, that, that master patient index allows the linking of, re of disparate records, um, so pharmacy, drug, you know, prescriptions, um, HIV data, TB data, etc. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit later how that works. 
um, um, the, the kind of uh, core of the of the Western Cape um, information system is is the Provincial Health Data Center. So this is a very large SQL Server database, which um, originally uh, sucked data in from a number of disparate information systems, most of them not connected to to the internet, um, and and data was in ETL'd uh, in batches. So it would, it would get the, the export from tier.net monthly or quarterly, and that would be ingested. There'd be daily um, ingestion of laboratory results from the NHLS. Um, various um, pharmacy systems also submitted data. MomConnect submits data in there. Um, hospital systems um, also submit batches of data, as do some of the online primary healthcare facilities. Um, and all of that data is ingested into into this one database, um, and uh, and and the codes and the, fac the facility codes and drug codes and and, and uh, laboratory codes and, and results are curated by a team of, of analysts who, who make sure that the coding is all correct. Um, it's it's split into two parts. One is um, a clinical database, and the other is a patient demographic database, and you, the, the, the records between the records in those two different databases are linked via an internal identifier. So the demographic data can be shared without um, linking to the clinical data, and the clinical data can be shared without any personally identifiable information. Um, and that could, you know that's for research and analysis purposes. Um, the, the data is uh, is used primarily for patient care, so there's um, a patient-centric view of, of the data, um, which which people use to check um, health health status and loss to follow-ups, drug adherence, etc. Um, it's used for public health decision making and and also for research. So that brings me to the African Health Information Exchange, uh, which is the program that, that we're working on, one of the programs GMB is working on. This is a three-year grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Um, the aim is to expand the Western Cape Provincial Health and Data Model that, um, that I was just talking about to other provinces in South Africa and to other countries in Africa. Um, it's, it, it, it's about developing and promoting interoperability between the national information systems and the disparate provincial district and metro systems and any other health data that, that can be linked. So the, you know, the main um, thing that needs to be present is that, is that, national, is that unique identifier which, um, which fits into the, you know, the, the, the health normal standards framework and the open HIE model. And um, and needs to be present, and, and South Africa is busy rolling out the health population registration system that I mentioned, which is um, allocating unique identifiers to every patient in the country, health beneficiary. Um, there's also integration of community data. So there's a, there's a lot of different organisations that are working at a community level um, with some kind of mobile device and that data is also being integrated and linked into the into the health information exchange. Um, there's a focus on using HL7 interfaces into the exchange. Um, originally, the, the data ETL and ingestion was just batches, um, but there's we, we've implemented the OpenHIM around that health um, that health information exchange, and now um, we submit and and query. Uh, fire documents from that system as well. Um, and as, as mentioned, it depends on the rollout of the health population registra, uh, registration system in the rest of the country for the unique identification. Um, there is inside, inside of the, the, the uh, provincial health data center is, is a, a, a kind of a, a little master patient index. So there's quite a lot of functionality and logic to match records. Um, there's, there's about, I think, 25 rules that you know, that each record will run through, unlinked record will run through to see if it can be linked. The, the, the AHIE program is, a, is uh, made up of a, a number of different partners. 
many of whom I've already mentioned. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, of course, the University of Cape Town Center for Infectious Disease and Epidemiological Research, GEMBI Health Systems, the National Health Laboratory Services, the National Department of Health, and the South African Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. So one of the first um, components of this pr uh, project that we began to work on was the, the single patient viewer. So this is a web-based application that is used to view a patient's longitudinal history. Um, it it's it, it uh, queries the, um, the provincial health data center and pulls back data, the patient demographic data the encounters that the patient has had with the health system, the episodes such as HIV, TB, pregnancy, diabetes, etc. All the lab results stored in the system and all the prescriptions and drugs, um, drug information. And um, you know, one of the one of the, the sexiest um, uh, functionalities of the system is the is the single patient viewer, graphical viewer, which you can see on the right. Um, and that gives you a graphical view of, um, of the episodes, the, the encounters, the drugs, and the labs. And you can actually, um, for an HIV patient, you can see the, the CD4 count and the viral load going up and down as different drug regimens are, are implemented. Um, and it's, it's very helpful to clinicians. Um, the, this, uh, this single patient viewer communicates with the health information exchange through fire resources. So that's observations, encounters, et cetera, um, or um, medication prescriptions. Um, so all of the communication is done um, using fire resources. Um, another, part of the, another part of the program is the um, Open uh, Local Health Information Mediator, which we call the Open LIM. So this, this is a, an attempt to web enable some of the um, systems that, that have been around for a number of years and do not have web functionality. One of, one of those is, is the tier.net system. So that's that standalone system I was mentioning earlier. Um, the Open Limb is a, is a small service that sits, a very simple service that sits behind, beside tier.net. And, and what it does is it queries the, the National Health Laboratory Services um, data for a particular patient pulls that data down as fire documents, um, places, that, places that data onto the tier.net file system, um, and then tier.net imports that um, and links it to, and links the data to existing patients. Um, and that's, um, that's done in a trickle-down basis. So whenever there's um, connectivity, the OpenLIM will connect to the, through the OpenHIM to the, to the lab interfaces and pull down as, as much data as possible while the connection exists. And it's, it's got uh, functionality to remember which patient's data it's pulled down, um, you know, which, how complete it is, and if, it, if, if something happens, like the power goes out or, or, or the system runs out of um, data, uh, then it, it resumes where it left off. Um, so this is just an example. I mean, I'm sure everyone knows um, about Fire, but this is just an example of one of the resources. So we use observation for the laboratory results um, rather than diagnostic report because it's a little bit simpler. Um, and this is an example of the Open Him Lab Request um, transaction. So I'm not sure how many people have used the Open Him, but this is an example of the transaction screen showing the request and the response. So that's a request for a patient's lab results, and it comes down in a fire bundle. Um, the third um, arm of, of, the, of, of the African HIE program is Catch and Match, and this is the community integration that I mentioned. I'll play a short video, um, but um, just to give an overview, this is, a, this is a part of the interoperability layer that allows community um, health workers or, or organizations that, um, that have community health workers working for them that allows them to submit data into the health information exchange. That data does not have a unique identifier because it's, it's captured at household level 
and um, people at households usually don't know what their unique identification is. Um, that's, the data gets submitted to the Health Information Exchange and runs through that same um, uh, linking process that I mentioned with those you know, 20 rules or so, and, lo and that, those data get, get linked, those patients get linked to existing patients in the, um, in the Health Information Exchange and then the, the um, unique identifier gets sent back down to, to community level. Um, and, and this is mainly about um, people who are identified as needing to see a health professional at, at a household level being referred to facility and then for the health workers to be able to close that referral loop. Um, and, and so they can tell whether the patient has subsequently gone to a, a, a facility. And that's, that's pretty remarkable considering that the facilities don't have electronic systems um, that are online. Um, I'll just play the video. Hello. So our purpose is to we don't want we don't want our manual manual citizen. We educate we educate pregnant mother about in nutrition. We educate we encourage them to our children to their treatment. We also promote e health. We also educate the mother about immunization, the important of immunization. We also support the pregnant mothers about exclusive breastfeeding. We also support them to take care of their children. So, the Catch and Match project is a collaboration between the Western Cape Department of Health and the Faladi Trust. The mobile health tool was developed for community healthcare workers and coordinators. It can enumerate households, capture individual demographic data, verify patients through the provincial health data center, screen and refer patients, as well as follow up on referrals from facilities. Data is sent from the mobile app through an interoperability layer using an open source tool, the Open Hip, to the Western Cape Department of Health Provincial Health Data Center. The Open Him keeps audit logs of every transaction. Patient information is sent in FIRE format. Referral information from facilities is also sent back to the Open Him in FIRE format so that community healthcare workers can access the information through the Catch and Match app on their mobile phones. It, 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 it is so helpful to us because it's a good effect. Because if you send the client at the clinic, it's not easy to dodge you and say, I did go to the clinic. You will see if they the phone, if it's there today. And also, the, 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 the client, when they see you using the phone and give you the, the referral letter, they go there because they. They think that if you if she only didn't go to 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 clinic, you will see it. So they it's it's, it's helpful. Aggregate reports are generated by the Provincial Health Data Centre and sent to management at various levels. The reports detail the percentage of linked patients, the number of referrals, and the type of referrals. The average amount of time it took for patients with various health conditions to appear at a facility after a referral is made is also recorded. Finally, anonymized patient visit details are provided. The referral history can in turn affect what happens next. Yes, yes, the phone is very helpful. Because I know the other day I was doing house to house and I do the household assessment. And as we know that when we do the household, you do you do a follow up after nine months if there is no problem with us. If this household is not default or everything is okay, so the other day I go with my notification. I was doing the household. I was I had ordered the household for for that family. So 
I there the no pregnant mother, there was not pregnant mother. So I go I go, I go to the notification and check my all my household. And after I check all my mother, I check all my food. I see that there is a date here, you know, that is last 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 year dating tiger egg was on that date. So I was curious to go back to that household, although it's not a nine months, and I just I pick up the pregnant mother. Because by that time I was here, she was not pregnant. Let's say the referral received was for a pregnant woman called Alexandra Peterson. The community healthcare worker would have seen her facility referral under the new notifications tab in the app. She would be able to see why the woman was referred, as well as a summary of when she was last recorded as visiting a healthcare facility. She would also see when Alexandra's next antenatal care visit is due. The app would check with her if this referral requires further follow-up. The community healthcare worker would also check Alexandra's demographic information. At any stage, the facility or supervisor can check what is the status of any referral. It, it, it makes our, our job, our work is Okay, so um, great. So those are the three arms of, of the African Health Information Exchange project. Um, we have, we have a lot of plans going forward. One of them is to start trying to integrate the CLBS systems, uh, civil registration and vital statistics, so it's births and deaths, um, which are obviously very important, especially for loss to follow up, especially for HIV management uh, and TB management. We want to integrate a mobile, um, a mobile phone framework platform, which has got to do with SIM management and healthcare worker device management. Um, and then we also want to integrate hospital systems, um, which are sometimes a little bit more difficult. Um, the data outputs of of the health, of the provincial health data center, and, um, and and this will probably be kept at a provincial level because we think the expertise necessary to maintain facility lists and drug coding lists, lab result lists, etc., um, needs to be at a provincial level because it's it's a little bit too much. Um, complexity to to handle at national, even at provincial level, it's it's a fairly complex procedure, and they need there's quite an advanced system of, um, of notification so that if data that comes in from from the, from the batches or from from the interoperability layer um, that has codes that don't match the lookups within the, within the data warehouse, the provincial data center um, alerts get sent out to to the um, the curators, and then they go and investigate. This, you know, this is a new facility that we've never seen before. Um, you know, what's what's going on? We've never seen this um, this lab results or this lab test code. Um, you know, what's what's going on there? And and it it's, it allows them to maintain a very robust um, coding system. So the the data outputs from from the from the provincial health data center um, are. are there's multiple outputs. Um, obviously, the you know one of the most important is the patients level longitudinal records, um, which are accessed through the SPV and also through some other some other mechanisms. Um, there's also case-based surveillance. All of the all of the Sentinel events um, are already stored routinely within the system, so there doesn't have to be an extra um, level of of uh, complexity or work done to, to get those sentinel events and, 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 and generate the, the CBS reports. Um, also integrate in similar fashion integrates the um, disease surveillance and response data is in there. Everything's stored at the most granular level possible. So um, there's no need to have extra systems to do that. You just you just write reports. Um, all of this data also can get uh, exported into DHIS2 for for aggregate reporting, if necessary, um, it's, it's it's very easy to do that, and there is some functionality to do that already. And the HIV 1990-90 cascades are also um, being 
um, produced out of the system. And there's a number of diff other cascades, um, cancer cascades and, and others that are, that are being worked on at the moment as well. Um, and then obviously datum reports, which um, would, uh, keeping, that, keeping the, the, the data at, at patient level is, is very helpful because when the indicators change, if the age, age disaggregations change, you can redo your, your aggregate data, um, indicators and data elements, um, which of course you can't do if the data is already pre-aggregated. Um, and then part of our um, remit is to also expand this um, into other countries. So we, we'll start with other provinces in South Africa and then expand into other countries. And the, um, the system is, uh, is fundamentally all open source. So um, yeah, we very, we'd be very pleased to share that, uh, that, uh, that information with, with others. Um, great, well that's, uh, that's the end of the presentation. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you for this presentation, Sir Pierre. Uh, we are now open for questions. For everyone with questions, please type them below in the questions panel. Thank you. Uh, we have a few questions here. The first one reads, given the shift towards fire, were the PIX-M and PDQM profiles ever considered for use in the HPRS? Uh, yes, uh, good, good question. Um, definitely, we'd, uh, we'd love to, to um, uh, add those interfaces as well. Um, HPRS is a, is a National Department of Health um, piece of software, uh, and they, they, curate, um, they curate the software. Um, the, the Health Normative Standards Framework, which is a South African um, blueprint for the information system, actually does not mention FIRE because it was, it was developed before FIRE was a, a serious contender. But they are working on, it's a, the, the, Cent, the Council for Scientific, Scientific and Industrial Research um, are working on additions to the Health Normative Standards Framework, which, which will include FIRE. So as soon as possible, we'd like to implement um, FIRE interfaces for, for PIXM and PIX P, uh, PDQM. So, great question. Yes, thank you, Sir Pierre. Uh, the next question is, um, what are the terminologies or vocabularies used for the code list? Um, we, I think LOINC is used um, most. In, in the Western Cape. Um, the National Health Laboratory System um, has their own internal uh, um, coding system which, which is not an international standard and that's a, a parameter code and a test code to, to identify each, each separate um, test and the possible results that come from those tests. Uh, South Africa also has its own drug coding system called NAPI um, which uh, is there are some attempts to link that into ATC, but at the moment, um, it's it's not uh, it's not very coherent. Uh, and then I think there are some attempts to start using SNOMED, but um, uh, I don't think that's uh, I don't think that's very um, mature. And then um, ICD-10 is actually very uh, very well used and ubiquitous. Um, so a, a lot of a lot of a lot of um, it's definitely the private sector all um, require the use of ICD-10 and, and the public sector uses it um, a lot as well. So all of, our, all of our mortality data is based on ICD-10 codes. So not, not only the, it's not only the health department that uses ICD-10, but the um, home affairs and, and, uh, and the CRVS data is also linked to ICD-10. Thank you, Sir Pierre. Uh, our next question reads, how does the Provincial Data Center handle patients from other provinces in South Africa, given patient movements between provinces? Uh, and then, is there a method to probe the, pat the patient's record from outside the province within South Africa? Um, also a very good question. Um, so in South Africa, um, the, the public health um, system needs to um, 
uh, provide services to to anyone um, who arrives um, at the at the public health facility or hospital. So um, if if someone from outside of the province or outside of the country arrives, they'll get assigned a, a Western Cape clinic on ID. Um, so there's no and, and 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 South Africa also has a national ID, which is which is very um, there's great coverage of the national ID, but you know there's only about a 60 60 percent um, only 60 percent of people arrive at clinics with their ID, um, and there are obviously also some people who don't want to use their national ID, um, you know for various reasons, one of them being uh, stigma, um, H you know of HIV infection um, so you know the, there's a this this this, uh, this master patient index um, fuzzy matching and linking process within the provincial health data center manages to match a lot of people who are not who don't arrive with their national IDs um, but there is some there is some measure of uh, duplication so you, you'll have a number of a number of clinicom numbers for the same patient um, which which is hard to get away from, but it's 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 better than having a number of patients with the same clinicom number. Um, in terms of getting data from um, other provinces in, into the provincial systems, at the moment that's not um, that's not possible or, or even planned. Um, and the reason for that is that the the provinces are responsible for curating data and for the data security, and um, they are they they are the organisation that will be sued if you know if, if there's a contravention of the of the Protection of Personal Information Act. So provinces are generally quite careful to uh, maintain their own um, patient data. Um, as as the health population registration system gets rolled out, um, the, the the Western Cape uh, coding system identification system will be. Um, Subsumed or integrated into the national um, unique identification system, so the, the HPRN number or the, the unique identification number issued by the HPRS system is a ten-digit um, numeric code, and uh, the Western Cape has been allocated um, a, a range of numbers that um, so th there, there won't be any overlap. But in terms of sharing clinical data. Um, that's not uh, that's not planned yet. Uh, yes, thank you. Our next question is: uh, What are the uh, back on the topic of fire? Which resources have been most used so far? Um, so at, at the moment, it's um, it's mainly observation, at patients, observation and encounter, and referral, um, and. Um, Medication statements. And we also use group. We use the groups um, resource for the household. We, so that's that's what we use for households. Uh, and I think that's I think that's mostly mostly it. All right. Uh, our next question reads: Is there a room for health record banking? Where patients can get some kind of dividend in lieu of the data that they tender to, into the system. Um, no, we haven't. We, we haven't thought about that. Um, I no, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, we have thought about micro incentives for healthcare workers, um, but not not for patients. Okay. Um, the next question reads, um, suppose I'm a tech-savvy physician in South Africa who wants to be a perfect and most advanced user of H AHIE. What, what gadgets, technologies, and CPU configurations do I need to have? Um, so I think, uh, I think the main thing that you'd need is to be in, in the Western Cape, because that's when most of the electronic systems are, are being implemented at the moment. Although, as I said, there's a lot there's a lot of um, movement you know, nationally as well. Um, you'd need to be on the wide area network and the VPN so that you can access the provincial data. 
And other than that, um, really all you need is a, is a mobile is a mobile phone connected to the VPN, uh, and you should you can access the the single patient viewer, view patient um, the, the patient's clinical history, etc. There is um, there is a security um, constraint where you can only visit you can only view patients who have been to a facility that the physician has has is registered at. So. Um, you can see all the other. You can see data from the other facilities, but only if that patient has visited your facility. Um, so that's that's one of the that's that's one of the restrictions. Um, in terms of data submission, um, in, in the Western Cape, there is this um, uh, electronic continuity of care record, which which is basically a hospital discharge summary, um, and that's that's a very useful. Um, document that, that gets filled out when a patient leaves the hospital and basically um, stores, stores relevant information for refer referral purposes. Um, and that's also web-based, so not, uh, no need for any um, in intense IT equipment. Um, and then, yeah, in terms of HPRS, that's a, I think that's a fairly low spec um, um, a desktop machine that, or a laptop that sits at facility level. Um, I think it's probably four, four gigs of RAM or so uh, in order to run the virtual machine. Uh, Tear.net also runs on very small, um, you know, low, 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 um, uh, low spec machines, probably two, you know, one to two gigs of RAM uh, necessary for those. And none of this is very CPU intensive. Um, Obviously, in terms of the central components, web servers, SQL servers, um, interoperability frameworks, that's, that's a different story. Um, I'll just give you a little, a little, a little if you're interested in, 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 uh, in infrastructure, I'll just give you an example of, of the MonConnect setup. So what that is, is it's, two, it's three um, bare metal servers. One is, one is smaller than the other ones and is used as a load balancer. Um, yeah, and then there's two other there's two other much bigger servers which have I think four virtual machines on each, um, and those are are redundant copies of each other. So we have a we have a load balanced redundant cluster for MonConnect, and I think those servers are each the big ones are 32 gigs of RAM each, so split into six four into four virtual machines, um, so that's eight gigs each. Yeah, eight, eight gigs each. Yes, thank you, Sir Pierre. Um, I think this question is related to the previous one. Uh, what kind of resources are needed to set up uh, to set the system up uh, in the hardware, software, and financial concerns? Okay, um, that's a very good question. So all I can do is is let you know what. What's running in the Western Cape at the moment, um, and just just to get the provincial health data center up and running, um, I think there's only two servers. One of them is a is a, is a large and chunky Microsoft SQL server, um, and that I think has got a few terabytes of um, of spinning disk storage, and a couple of hundred gigabytes of um, SSD storage. Um, I think it's an i7 processor, quad-core processor, uh, and I'm not sure what the RAM is, but I'm sure it's 32 or 64 gigs of RAM at least. Um, the other server is the application server that runs the OpenHIM, and we run that uh, in a, a virtual machine. Um, and obviously the web server and the so we have the, the SPV and the, we have the, we have two two components. One is the patient data interface, which is the API layer into the data center, and then the um, the, the SPV, which is the web application that renders the um, the patient's longitudinal records and the you know that graphical viewer. Um, and I, I think that's much smaller. That's about an eight gig um, RAM server. Also, not at the moment. Lo the load isn't necessary for um, for a super high spec CPU and um, and and fast disks. So, so that, that's a much smaller server. And then the VPN, which is 
not something that we had to deal with, but that's quite an important um, part of the, of the framework as, uh, in order to, to keep everything secure. So there's a very, very strict firewall um, that, that, and, and, and access control that, um, you know, it's, it's, you definitely, generally have to be an employee of the national, uh, of the provincial Department of Health in order to access any of their internal systems. Thank you, Sir Pierre. Uh, the next question is, which data exchange paradigm is being used when fire resources are being routed by open HIM, REST, messaging, service, or document? Um, so it's, it's all HTTP um, and, and REST. Uh, we, we try and use REST as much as possible. Um, we're not using any of the more complex uh, protocols. Um, it's, it's just, it's just um, uh, um, MVC uh, REST. Uh, this is a follow-up question, Sir Pierre. Uh, are these being done as part of or external to IHE profiles? I, I mean, I think the, I mean, we're using, I, th I think we're not f strictly following IAT profiles, but we are very strictly following the fire resource specification. Um, so we, we 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 subscribe to the to the fire specification, but not necessarily to you know, the ITI profiles um, very strictly. Although the, the workflows are common. Thank you, Sir Pierre. Uh, are there any more questions from our participants? Uh, you can type your questions in the questions panel. Uh, and then there's a comment here, uh, a, a question, uh, would it be possible to post the video you showed before, Sir Pierre? Can we have the link here? Um, I think so, give me a second. Um, I don't. Ha I don't have it right now, but I will. Um, how, how can I share that with the with the group? Uh, I Shall think we I can just send it. No, you yeah. afterward. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, we have two more questions, Sir Pierre, from our participants. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So, the first one is why are you not using IHE profiles? So we've taken an approach in this project to be informed by the IHE profiles uh, as we're working with local departments and universities to push things forward. In South Africa, we have the Health Normative Standards Framework, which does set out some of the IHE profiles to be utilized in the country, but is also under review and following an implementation-driven approach. But from a practical perspective and a technical perspective, the speed and use of fire map really well to our local uh, resources and capacity to implement um, while we've then also had a look at how does that fit into the broader context of the country. So the short answer is we've been informed by them um, but in discussion with project sponsors and ourselves and the capacity around to implement we've looked to the future and started implementing towards fire. All right, thank you. Uh, and then the next question is is there an interlinked registry or terminology service in the Western Cape? Um, there's no interlinked registry um, at the moment. the The health center, the data, health data center, does not really focus too much on health workers, um, on nurses, or, or healthcare professionals. Um, so there isn't the, the the human resources system is is very separate. Um, to the, the, the health database. So, no, there's no interlinked registry, but um, we'd, like to, we'd like to implement something like that, especially with the uptake um, of, of this technology by other institutions and, and health workers, community health workers, which would need to go into the interlinked registry. And that's related to the integrated disease surveillance and response and notifications. So, managing, you know, notifying your, your healthcare worker cadres about um, outbreaks, etc. Um, we do have a we do have a, 
um, an extension of Mom Connect, which is called Nurse Connect, which is the um, beginnings of a, a nurse registry. So nurses are able to register into that um, platform and they get informational messages, regular informational messages. And then there's um, continuing professional development points, um, which they can gain by um, accessing various content on Mobi sites. So that is a that is a the beginnings of a of, of a health care worker or provider registry, which is actually linked to the master facility list. So, it, but it's not using CSD. Um, so I wouldn't call it an, a proper interlinked registry. And in terms of term terminology service, that's included within the um, provincial health data center. Um, so the, there's there's a different database schema that stores all of the lookup codes. And I, I was mentioning earlier about the, the curation process um, of making sure that all the codes are, are well are well documented and that there's um, you know there's referential integrity between the health the clinical records and the codes. All right, thank you, Sir Pierre. Uh, I think that's the last question for this session. Uh, I think we can wrap up now. Uh, thank you for all our participants who actively joined this webinar and also to our speaker for, for his time and expertise. Uh, we hope you can still join our upcoming webinars with GenB Health Systems. Uh, and then uh, if you have any more questions, we'll try to connect you to our speaker. Thank you and good night. Thank you very much.